What did you think of this promo? Terrible, right? Uh, at least it was short. They need to get this Jennifer Peppermint away from her. You cannot walk into AEW and essentially do the same shit from 2019 that everybody hated. Nobody wants these scripted, generic, catchphrase-ridden promos. I'm not saying that Jennifer Peppermint needs to be fired. Like there's, there's, I'm sure there's plenty of great things that she could do. But writing 19, 2019 WWE promos for Mercedes to spout out on AEW television is not one of those things. She needs to go out there and she needs to be herself. Not some character that she's playing here. She needs to be herself. And... She- Welcome to Three Con Commentaries. This is your host, Mongo Slade. Today, there's a Voices of Wrestling article by Joey O'Doherty. It says, talk is cheap. Why Mercedes Monet isn't the star people think she is. Oh my goodness. They're actually going after an AEW talent. This ought to be interesting. Um, now, part of what's going on here is that people are less than enthused about Mercedes Monet and AEW. And it's, it's starting to trickle out. Some people are very unhappy. Conan was also unhappy. Before we get into the article, Conan says, quote, uh, Mercedes Monet has been the biggest failure of all. Another bad promo. Did you not see that she's not good on the mic, live or backstage? We like her. We like her look. We like her wrestling, her swag. She's not good on the mic, and she comes off like a heel. This is what Conan says, and this is kind of echoed in this article, this column by Joey O'Doherty of Voices of Wrestling.com. But let's get into it because this ought to be interesting. Uh, it says, quote, this may not be a popular opinion, but Monet for me has always been presented like a star rather than actually be one. She has become the female equivalent of a modern day Seth Rollins. Fancy entrance, over-the-top attire, and being considered a true main event talent, despite never having the tools to become one. Wait, how is she a modern-day Seth Rollins when Seth Rollins is modern-day? <laughs> what are you talking about? They're contemporaries. <laughs> oh, we're off to a run already. We're good. We're, we're, we're having a run already. Let's go. On her day, Monet is a fine, accomplished in-ring performer. Some say that she is arguably the best female wrestler of the last decade on American television. But as a personality, I never really connected with her boss character in WWE. The idea of a flashy female badass is a good one, especially in her in-ring work shows plenty of fire and passion. But her personality and verbal skills have always disconnected me from believing it as she doesn't have the tools to portray it. Oh boy. She's not a good promo. People tell me Monet's a big deal, and I don't dispute her many positives, but I just don't feel her as a main event attraction compared to other stars in AEW. Now, wait a second. (laughs) I got to mentally prepare myself for what I think is about to occur here. Now, let's get right into it. I'm not going to even add any extra thoughts. In the weeks building to AEW's big business, the Dynamite special, which heralded the debut of Mercedes Monet, the buzz around the internet was that the former Sasha Banks was a huge top star and that she would make a huge splash in AEW. Her supporters online told me she was a big deal, and in certain terms, she is. Well, I hate to break it to you, Joey, but this is how a lot of AEW fans have treated every single person who has joined the company. Will Ospreay, Kazuchika Okada, Edge, Soraya, Tony Storm, all of them. They said every single one of them was going to be a game changer. Every single one of them had the opportunity to do something different. Uh, Claudio Castagnoli, John Moxley, everybody. Well, Moxley actually did change the game a little bit. But there are some people who, for everybody that AEW signs, they look at that as they're coming to see we're the best wrestle and all this kind of stuff. And these people are going to change the game. And none of them ever do. You know, none of them ever do. None of it works. All right. Let's uh, go into the article again. He says, Monet is a popular former WWE star 
choosing to join an alternative to their sports entertainment based product. AEW made me excited in how they hyped her, but I was always skeptical of her ability to be spoken in the same breath as other top stars. When she debuted in March, Monet was given the CM Punk light treatment, the show named after her, the big opening promo, and she was presented to be the AEW fans as the big star. She still had the good bit of WWE presentation stink, which made her feel less organic and less natural, but I won't hold that against her. Besides that, she looked like a star and presented herself as such. A million bucks, but then the music stopped and she picked up a mic. Okay. She still had a good bit of the WWE presentation stink, which made her feel less organic and less natural. Um, I guess what they mean by is, you know, some of the, the way WWE stars do their entrances, you know, um, it's a trademark, you know, people do, I guess they just want people to just walk to the ring, just walk to the ring, flat affect, walk to the ring, maybe clap a hand or two, like, you know, the old days, but wrestlers who are now trying to be showmen, they understand that sometimes how you walk is a part of your character how you dress is a part of your character. She should have came out there in a sweatshirt, in a sweatshirt. You know, that might have felt more at home in AEW. She came out there dressing like Will Ospreay, who apparently dresses like a Kira Toriyama. Like, come on, just wears track suits everywhere, for God's sakes. <laughs> Sheesh. Let's get back to this article. For me, Monet debuted just bombed when she opened her mouth. Take away her flashy attire and chantable theme music, and she was badly exposed. Her promo was many, many levels below what I would consider a decent class promo. AEW is full of great talkers like Britt Baker, Brian Danielson, and MJF. And poor Monet can't hold a candle to any of them. John Moxley can pull a decent promo out on the fly and speaks with passion and conviction that compel you to listen up. Even Claudio, someone I wouldn't particularly rate as having strong verbal abilities, does it better than Monet. Oh my goodness. She was out of her depth. The problem is after a decade of working in WWE, she still hasn't gotten the chops to cut a decent promo. The promo was heartfelt, sure, but it rambled on, with Monet delivering her message with the confidence of a nervous 10-year-old speaking at a school play. Promos just aren't her bag. <sighs> mm. I think she was kind of nervous. Uh... Because, you know, this was breaking into a different audience. You know, it was a pretty big audience, a lot of pressure. She had talked herself up. And now she's got she's to do this thing. She's got to deliver. And that's going to always create an air of nervousness. But the promo wasn't very good. I will say that. Um, and almost all of her promos are not very good because they sound scripted and they feel scripted. Um, I, I, I tell you this. Sasha Banks promos before her little sabbatical. Well, the sabbatical took place, what was this? Maybe WrestleMania 35, I think it was. Her promos before that were fine. And then she got that, that little sabbatical where she had a tantrum and she was brought back. And she got terrible after that. And like I said, she was a fine promo. She wasn't the best, but it was okay. It wasn't cringe. It didn't come across as being too overly fake. But then she went on her sabbatical when she came back and they were absolutely goddamn awful. So as soon as she got blue haired Sasha, as soon as she came back with all of that, it was just no good. And it's been even worse since she left WWE, you know, but whatever. <laughs> Let's continue the article. Uh, he says, not every wrestler has to be excellent on the microphone, but each week since then, Monet has been wheeled out to cut a similar promo or be placed in a similar position, which she simply does not excel in. She may be the self-proclaimed CEO in kayfabe, but every time she speaks, whether it's a live promo or a backstage segment, she clearly just doesn't have the personality, presence, or verbal abilities to portray one. Wow. I, I told you, she all she really does is say, History. Monet. <laughs> Monet. Or it goes from Monet to Monet. And history. Those are things that are always going to come up. And um, they're not very good. They're not very strong at all. But okay. She's, uh, <laughs> he's, he says, quote, 
Sadly, when I think of true main event stars, they all have to bring more verbal presence to the table than Monet can bring. Admittedly, it's early for Monet, but four weeks in, it's been all very similar. It's been her cutting bland, passionless promos each chance she gets. I hear her speaks, but she says very little and doesn't without the personality to draw in the viewer. Uh, I guess she says, does it without the personality? If she has to have any chance at being a true top star, she needs to get the wrestling boots on. So I asked a question. Why is Monet booked this way? He continues saying, when Paul Heyman was booking ECW, he had a simple but effective mindset. Accentuate the positives, hide the negatives. I always been a firm believer that you show the strengths of your wrestlers and hide their weaknesses. Unfortunately, wrestling is littered with many examples of performers being put to positions that do exactly opposite. The latest of which appears to be the use of Mercedes Monet and AEW. All right, let's talk about this for a second because Paul Heyman's accentuate the positives, hide the negatives. That only works for so long. You know, um, the, the idea, I agree with not rushing Mercedes Monet to the ring. You want to get people invested in something first. If she can't do it, then you have to lean on the opponent to do it. This is an opportunity for somebody else. You know, um, if the, one of the people she was feuding with was a strong promo, it would be an opportunity for somebody to cut a strong promo on her. But because she's not feuding with strong promos, she's not a strong promo, and there's no real emotion attached to it, then everything feels detached. You know, part of what is going on here also with Paul Heyman is that Paul Heyman had, he worked magic in terms of editing matches to make them look much better than they really were and also producing promos. Paul, you know, there was documentaries done on this stuff and Paul talked about it. He would make a guy do a promo over and over and over again. I mean, just make him until one or two o'clock in the morning. They would be up doing promos because Paul would say, it's not good enough. Do it again. It's not good enough. Do it again. And Vince would do the same thing. But you have to have a certain management style to feel like you can draw something out of the talent and telling them to do it over and over and over and over until you get it the way that you want it. Tony Khan seemingly does not have that kind of hand. He doesn't have that kind of authority over his talent, even though he should. He seems to be like, oh, they cut the promo. OK, good. And then that was it. He's not standing there producing it. Paul produced almost all of the promos that aired on e, on uh, ECW TV. Vince McMahon produced a lot of the vignettes and the promos. He would often stand off to the side and watch, and he would make you do it again until, you know, he would help you. If Tony Khan can't help, somebody else needs to. They need to be somebody there who can produce good promos. Not just writers, but somebody who says, Hey, I like this, 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 and this. We're going to do it again, but I need you to hit these points. You know, again, do it again. Do it with more passion. Do it with more authority. You know, facial expressions, whatever. That's the kind of stuff that some people need. They need a coach. You know, sometimes you need a drill sergeant, but most people need a coach, a mentor, somebody who can stand there and say, this promo is okay, or this promo is the shit, so you need to do it again. And most people in AEW don't seem to have that. While WWE, they complained that there was too much of it. You know, that there was too many people telling you how to say things and what to say. And there was they were overly critiquing you. And then once that that heavy hand moves just a little bit, you get what you're talking about now. Which is bland, passionless promos from people who can certainly do better, but don't feel the need to because who the hell is going to make them? Back to the article. The former Sasha Banks rose to fame on the back of her NXT matches. We're not going to talk about this. Who cares? So why aren't we seeing Monet wrestle? Why does it appear that AEW are holding off until double or nothing at the end of May to finally see her in the ring? If promos are her weakness, why is she being presented to cut promos each week and not wrestle? Well, here's, a, here's part of the issue as well. Her matches mean more if people get involved with the storyline. So... If she's going to have to take bumps, then she should take bumps when they matter. 
which means investing in a storyline. I am not going to complain that the company wants people to invest in a storyline before she has her first match. The problem is the storyline is weak. The storyline is whack. All right. That's the problem. It's a whack story. You have to, you have to build it up a little bit more and then people will have emotional investment and then the matches will mean something. But also the more people are talked and produced and coached, you can turn your weakness into a strength. You can turn, you can improve your weaknesses. This is also something that I really don't like about wrestling fans that they say, well, you're not good at something. Stop doing it. It's like, it's part of your job. If it's something that is part of your job, you have to improve it. And the best way to improve it is to be forced to do it. And the more you do it, the better you'll get good at it. If somebody is there to help you and give you good feedback, which again, I'm not sure is what's happening in AEW. I'm not certain that people are getting good feedback in AEW. Um, let's continue. This is the final paragraph. It's my opinion that Monet is badly exposed each week. And if she is to have a ch any chance of being a true draw in AEW, she needs to be highlighting her in-ring skills and laying off the badly performed promos. I still doubt her ability to be as capable as the others at the top of AEW's card, but if she's to prove me wrong, she needs to ditch the promos and get grappling fast. Well, let's talk about this for a second, because who in their women's division is a bigger star than, than her? You say, oh, she's she shouldn't be a top star. Okay, who's a bigger star? There is no one else. You know, nobody else in AEW is a bigger star than Mercedes Monet. I mean, um, if there were somebody who can actually cut a promo, you could put that person across the ring from her. Britt Baker can cut a promo. Tony Storm is a fun promo. There are other people who can cut promos, but they didn't put them in this story. You know, she's in a story with spooky girl Julia Hart, who doesn't even change her facial expression, let alone cut strong promos. And Willow Nightingale, who is as bubbly as, you know, Sprite, but didn't really start cutting promos until recently and has never shown a that her promos would be able to draw significant levels of interest. These people are liked by the AEW audience. They're not loved by the AEW audience. Strong emotions and the rule of cool can change a lot. Now, the rule of cool is pretty simple. Um, it comes from, it's like a TV trope or like something like that. What it means is that if something is cool and it stretches, you know, the rules of it, it, the established universe, then it works. You know, uh, Canadian destroyers, for instance, they go, people doing all that kind of stuff. It's very rule of cool. Hey, we like Canadian destroyers. So they are going to do 400 of them in a match. Of course you destroy it by that point. It's not cool anymore, but that's the idea is that you can do cool things as long as and at break immersion, as long as it's cool. Sasha Banks being a strong promo and personality. She's a cool person. She is a person who has a legion of fans who want to be like her, who love her and are not micro criticizing her promos and all this sort of stuff. She, she works on a rule of cool type of level. If you want to get to the point where, you know, you want to micro analyze everything, then no, she's probably not very good. And it is what it is. I mean, that's just facts. But I look at all of this stuff similar to mainstream entertainment, where if you were to take certain pop stars and you were to say, is she a good singer? Is she a good dancer? Is she good at playing instruments? Or are there people better than her at all three? The answer might be yes, but this pop star is good enough at all of these things and has an aura, a personality, charisma, you know, says the right things, does the right things, all this sort of stuff. And it all galvanizes around her to make her a bigger star than people who play instruments better, who dance better, who sing better, etc. If all you care about is wrestling, and promos, then a lot of people aren't very good, you know, but if you can take in everything around them, you know, sort of the it girl personality that she brings, you know, the 
the flashiness, the fashion, the whole nine yards, it all immediately makes her the creativity. It makes her a bigger star. And I, I know there is this belief that you should strip everything down to its most bare bones, but that's not how reality works. You know, we don't listen to songs a cappella, so it doesn't matter whether the person can sing or not. Most people don't listen to instrumentals, so it doesn't matter whether the beats are that great or not. It needs to be a marriage of the two. Mercedes is not really a strong promo. She can wrestle really, really well. As hell, sometimes her wrestling matches aren't even all that good. It takes some time to get these things to synergize and get it working. And when it does, she's better than everybody else on your roster. The bare bones that strip away all of her presentation, her flashy entrance, her theme music, and everything that makes her cool and unique. We take all of that stuff away. Yeah, she's just as boring as everybody else then at that point. So that's why you don't do that. That's why you don't strip away everything that makes her interesting. You let her have what's interesting because it covers up the fact that she's not going to be wrestling every week. It covers up the fact that she can't really talk or she talks um, in only two or three phrases or everything is to get back to history and money, history and money. You get away from that. But if you strip everything away from everybody, they're mostly boring. And why would you want to do that? But the, the issue stems. You know, this whole thing stems from the fact that Tony Khan is not a tight enough hand on production and making sure that these promos are delivered the way that he needs them to delivered, that they have passion and intensity, that they kick and that they come from the heart and not necessarily from the head, because you can sometimes see people talking through their promos. They're overthinking them. You need to be able to get in there and massage this thing and help it make help the magic happen. But Tony Khan can't do that. So if you want to say, well, Paul Heyman would hide the hide the negatives. He's like, yeah, Paul Heyman would hide the negatives. And then you think the guy was great. And then he'd go to WCW and you'd be like, this guy sucks. Or he'd go to WWF and you'd be like, this guy sucks. It's like, because, yeah, because Paul was hiding the negatives trying and using editing to make you think this guy was great. And in reality, he sucked. <laughs> it was all presentation. And that seems to be the same thing that's happening here is that you get wrapped up in the presentation of Mercedes Monet, but at least it serves the goal of pushing the company forward. And Mercedes cannot push the company forward if she's just a wrestling wrestler like everybody else on the roster. So they need to produce her better. And, you know, she also needs to, you know, care more, but, you know. I think the more money she makes, the more the less she cares, but whatever. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah. We just gone.